So even in my case, it's like there's times where I'm scared. And as men, we find ourselves being scared of being so vulnerable to a woman because we feel as though that woman is going to hurt us. I don't, I don't think that matters about your culture or your ethnicity. I think every man across this planet is actually scared to be vulnerable to a woman that they love and care about. Ladies, I want y'all to listen to this. A lot of us men are scared to actually love you wholeheartedly, correctly, and, and then in the same breath say, hey, this is how I want to be loved, and this is, I'm going to be vulnerable to you, and I'm going to show to you my weakness, because outside the world, we got to show that we're this brute, strong man, and we're not this punk. But when we show our vulnerability to this woman, we're not saying that we're a punk. We're just saying, hey, these are my weaknesses. And I need you to cover me. I need you to protect me. I need to be in a place to where I'm safe. Just like you want to be in a place to where you feel safe and you feel secure. The same thing applies to a man. We're both, technically, ladies, I need y'all to understand this. Technically, technically, we as men, we want to be in a position to where you're our safe haven. Now, there's going to be times we can't talk to you about everything. Just like, ladies, you can't talk to us about everything. You got your homegirls to talk to. And we got our homeboys to talk to. But for the most part, when we get together, we're in a place, we're in a position of vulnerability. Now, what's interesting is that this is a reflection of Christ in the church. Some of you guys may not be believers. Some of you guys may not believe in um, Yahweh or Yahushua Hamasiah. That's our deity. That's our God. That's who we serve. That's who we love. That's who we worship, right? Being a Hebrew Israelite, that's who we worship. Hebrew Israelite in, a, in reference to our true nationality, ethnicity, ethnic nationality, right? So the same thing applies. When we're in a space with God, we're being vulnerable because the world is attacking us. We got coronavirus going on. The world is attacking us, our finances. The world is attacking us, the different people that we deal with. But when we get before God, we, sh we, have, we shouldn't be fearful of being in his presence because in his presence, we're able to be vulnerable. Technically, we're able to be naked, right? And be intimate. Now think about that in reference to marriage and being intimate with your spouse. You can take off your clothes. You can be intimate with your spouse. You have an intercourse with your spouse. And then sometimes you're, commun <laughs> I'm not trying to be uh, graphic here, but you're communicating with your spouse while being, uh, while having intercourse, you're talking to them. And then even after you're done with the intercourse, right? You're, you for the most part, most of, most women are like this. They want to talk, right? Some men are like that too. Right? We as men, we're like that too. We, we'll talk, we'll converse, we'll share our fears, our doubts, all this stuff after intimacy. But in that breath, we're conveying certain things, right? And it all comes into play in reference to our love language. Well, I'll end it with this. Um, in the song, uh, Show and Tell, Our Love Language, I didn't realize that I was pleading to be loved correctly. I didn't catch that. In the original song, and um, you can check out the original song right there, okay? There's a post. And then uh, you can also check out the current version of that song right there as well, okay? Check out those two versions of the song. But in that song, I didn't realize that I was, I really didn't realize I was crying out saying, hey, I'm loving you correctly. But I want to be loved correctly, too. I'm saying, hey, I can love you like Christ loves the church, but please don't have me do this by myself. Please love me correctly. I'm dying. I'm feeling empty because you're not loving me correctly. And now my, my gas tank is on E. And now I'm forcing myself to love you correctly. And while you're getting all this love and whatever you need, you still feel as though you're not, you're not obligated to reciprocate it. We're in a relationship now, and there is an obligation to love that person correctly. If you don't feel obligated to love that person correctly, and they're loving you correctly, then you don't need to be in a relationship. You need to take time to heal and get certain things in order with your own personal life. 
Because if you're in a relationship with somebody, you're obligated to love that person. I'm not talking about dating and getting to know somebody, but you're actively getting, you're actively in a relationship. Y'all using the L word. I love you. You love me. Y'all doing things in public. Y'all doing things behind closed doors. You guys are building. You guys are doing this. It ain't just, oh, it is what it is. We're just letting it be what it be. No, you know that you're actively in a relationship. People know you're actively in a relationship. Now it's time to start operating in that perspective and learning that person's love language and operating in their love language and vice versa. That goes for both men and women because it's easy to say, well, men don't do this. Okay. And on the flip side, we got men that say women don't do this. Now, what we need to be doing is examining ourselves because we can easily point the finger. Me being African-American living here in this country, I've often seen there's this there's this plight of pointing a finger and we can do that all day. But when are we going to take into consideration what the other person is saying and saying, you know what, I'm going to consider that and I'm going to work on that. And the other person says, you know, I'm going to consider what you're saying and I'm going to work on that. It all boils down to pride. And I said that before. If you if you choose not to learn somebody's love language and operate in their love language, then and you choose not to operate in their love language, for the most part, outside of being fearful, you're operating in pride. And you need to get that corrected. Because you can't have something healthy being in pride. Because pride will cause you to destroy something. Pride will cause you to push some push somebody away that loves and cares about you. That's what pride will do. All right, guys, my name is Gerard Kenneth. This is another Why Love uh, segment here on YouTube. Uh, this is segment number four, showing to our love language. Guys, be sure to hit subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell so you can get new videos like this, so you can get notifications concerning these segments, so you can get notifications concerning my music and any other random stuff I feel like talking about. All right, guys, please sure to follow me on all of my social media sites. And I'll end it on this note, guys. You have work have value and you're created for a relationship you're created to be loved and you're created to love right peace and god bless